God bless you and with you alone tonight. You heard that song, One Handful of Salt Can Heal a Nation. God bless you. This is the hour of prayer coming to you live from Faith Life Ministry. This is Bishop Vincent. We greet you in the name of Jesus. We are so glad that you are preparing to listen to this program on tonight. We are so glad that you and you that are there, our regular listeners, will pay attention to what we have to say on tonight. But while we are talking to you and ministering to you, remember this songwriter said, One handful of salt can heal a nation. Maybe you want to be a little dust in that and we want you to know that God will bless you in Jesus' name. Hello. I'm not I'm not hearing you. I've been trying to listen to your radio station over Wi Fi. Do you know why it's not working over Wi Fi? Hello, try dialing the number six four one seven nine three zero zero one nine two. Six four one six four one seven nine three zero one six four one seven nine three zero one nine two. Okay. God bless, God bless you. you. Yes, we are thanking God for you tonight and we give God the praise. We greet you because we love those people and everyone that listen to us and those who are planning to do so. We are coming to you live tonight from Faith Life Ministry. Faith Life Ministry is a family church located at 844 Claxon Avenue in Brooklyn, a place where you can come and worship God and praise God with us because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit said the Lord. So we are here tonight and last week we took our time and ministered to you and we feel very impressed and very strong that the message went out and you that called up and compliment you that called up and encourage us. We thank God for you that makes us believe that somebody is listening to what the Lord is saying in these last and closing days. Because of the response that we had with this program and last week we're going to just go over that program again and we want you and you to listen very attentively now listen don't move that dial keep it right there 92.9 fm that's choice radio and that's your choice and it's your decision to follow the lord and serve him in spirit and in truth so just keep your hearts in tune and listen to that song that will play at this time Sometimes I feel I am sleeping Sometimes I feel I'm drifting away Sometimes I feel so down This is my song I'm pleading to you
you listen to that song help me lord not astray so many people are strained today but we thank god that there is a spirit that can wake you up and somebody can help you not astray just open up your hearts at this time evangelist debbie going to take us to the throne of god you can worship the lord even while she pray bless the lord hallelujah father god we thank you this night Oh God, Lord God, for your grace, your mercy, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, Jesus, for the peace of God that passeth all understanding. We thank you, oh God, Lord God, for this season, oh God, Lord God, which we are in, oh God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, Jesus, that this night, oh God, as we come, oh God, Lord God, Jesus, to hear from you, oh God, and to expound the word, oh God, out there in Radio Land. We ask you, Lord God, to take charge. Lord God, move like never before, oh God, Lord God. We pray tonight, oh God, for receptive hearts, oh God. We pray, oh God, Lord God, Jesus, oh God, that the people will have a mind, oh God, Lord God, as they hear the word come forth, oh God, Lord God, that they will gladly receive it, oh God, and accept it, oh God, Lord God, that will bring about changes, oh God, in their lives. Father God, we ask you to take charge. Remember the panel tonight, oh God, Lord God. We pray, oh God, Lord God, let the spirit of unity, oh God, Lord God, Jesus, rest upon, oh God, each and every one of us, oh God, as we bring forth the word, oh God, Lord God, oh God, Lord God, that the listeners, oh God, Lord God, Jesus, oh God, will take heed, oh God, as you speak to us and you speak through us, oh God, Lord God, we put, oh God, all things in your hand, oh God, clear the airway, oh God, even now, Lord God, and we look to you, oh God, and we say thanks for the victory in Jesus' name. God bless. We hope that this prayer means a lot to you. Now, prayer is so important that when <coughs> someone is praying, you can reach out. And we know that God will bless you because you can only pray to God in sincerity. And when your heart is open, you can touch God by faith. So we mm. thank God for you on tonight. As I told you before, this program, we are going through this because we felt the Spirit of God moving in the lives of people and our aim and our vision is for you and you on the outside especially you that don't know the Lord we are spending time in talking to you because we don't want you to lose we don't want you to be lost we want you to know Jesus as your personal Savior each and every one of us in the studio had an experience sometime with God mm -hmm. that's why we are here talking to you and you and you and let me inform you we love you we love the people amen we love mankind because Jesus sent us with a vision and that is to lift them up so we're going to turn into the Word of God tonight after the reading of the word we're going to introduce you to our panel we are very very proud of the panel we have with us on tonight so just open up your hearts take your bible and go with us tonight to matthew 21 reading from the 
33rd verse. Evangelist Debbie will read for us. Please pay attention while the word of God is being read. Grace and peace out there in land. This is the word of God, Matthew 21 from verse 33 and down. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a winepress in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one, killed another and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of the season. Jesus said unto them, Did ye not read in the scripture, The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the head of the corner this is the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes therefore say i unto you the kingdom of god shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruit thereof and whosoever shall fall and this stone shall be broken but on whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder and when the chief priests and pharisees had heard his parable, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude, because they took him for a prophet. End of the reading. You heard the reading tonight. I guess that you might be saying in your heart, I don't want to be the wicked one. I don't want to be involved in cruelty and in crime, but I want to know the Lord. And that's why we are telling you tonight, while you are listening, you can just turn unto Jesus. While we are talking to you, you have the privilege of calling us. We will stop the program and talk to you because we love you and we are ministering to you. The number you should call for that tonight night is 347-663-8638. Never forget that number now is part of you. 347-663-8638. And if you want to listen on your cell, cell phone, clearly you can go to that number 641- 793-0192. Remember that number 641- 793-0192. Too. We are so happy tonight. We have in the studio with us as guests on this program. Faith Life have been doing a great work with the people that we are bringing to you. We are bringing people of, of standard, of integrity. We are presenting to you people of class that know the Lord. And when you know the Lord, the Bible says you shall do great things things. We are so happy tonight. We have missionary sister um, Nicholson tonight and then we have Reverend Nicholson. He, we, This couple has came in to us and the Lord has been good. And your old friend Evangelist Debbie as she ministered to us and she talk to you. God has been good to her. Amen. But we have a special, special guest in the studio tonight. This is an educator. This man of God is coming all the way from Trinidad, Dr. Young, a man of God. Dr. Young going to be speaking at Faith Life on tomorrow, God's willing. And I'll show you this. Don't miss out on this. This is a man of God that knows the word and deliver the word thus said the Lord. So we're going straight into this program on tonight and as we're going to turn and we're going to ask uh, Reverend Nicholson what can we share on the topic that we have on tonight thank you Bishop 
again the, the text said there was a certain householder the householder in the parable is God the Father Amen God the Father set out he said he put men to run the vineyard to build excuse me Hallelujah. and when the time of the fruit drew near he sent his servants to the husband man and they might that they might receive the fruit of it and the husband man took his servant and beat one and kill another and stone another ladies and gentlemen or brothers and sisters the the story is god picked people to do a work for him a work that was set out to do to bring redemption a work that was set out he put men in place which was the church leaders or, or the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees to watch over the people and when they when he sent his prophet with the word of God they did not receive them well because the men that was in charge or in place rather they had their own agenda not God's agenda mm -hmm. when you are when you are called by God to do a work for God you must know that you have to deny yourself amen yes. deny yourself and do what does said the Lord Jesus could not have said it better when Jesus came on the scene most of the time Jesus spoke he said, he said that I am about my father's business he went along to do his father's business never to please himself mm. but he put God first mm. and again the text tells us what they did with the prophets and then he sent his son which was Jesus Amen. hallelujah hallelujah when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus came again with truth. And brothers and sisters, if you have your own agenda in the church today, when they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, you would not accept it. Because David said in the, in, in the, in the Psalms, he said, Lord, your word will I hide in my heart. Mm -hmm. So I will not sin against you. Who is the word? The word is Jesus himself. Amen. The word is Jesus himself. So they did not accept Christ. The Bible tells us again that he came unto his own and they received him not. Hallelujah. But brothers and sisters, there is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. The text tells us Again, judgment will come on these people. Whosoever did not receive Christ. He said that, and there will be some that will go up against Jesus. He said, the text said, whoever rejected him will be sorry. Some will go up against him denying the word of Christ and, and, and wanting to confront Christ himself. But he said those who go against him, so they will be sorry. Some he will crush, crush like powder. Some will face judgment. So I dare you tonight. Tonight will be a night to make up your mind which way you want to go. Do you want to go and be a servant for God and do what thus said the Lord? 
or you want to go up against Christ, let me warn you, there is no winners Amen. when you go up against Jesus. Amen. Amen? Rev, I, I like what you said just now that we must deny ourselves. The Bible said that we must deny ourselves, take up the cross and, and follow. follow Jesus. Amen. The problem that we are seeing is that these men who stood out and did not obey I did not pay attention they was not really following in the word David did say thy word have I hid in my heart if we can only get to hide the word in our heart because we will survive by the word we will survive it we will make it we will grow we will live a victorious life when we have the word of God laying in our heart Amen. it's no wonder why Paul said I'm not ashamed of, of the, the gospel, gospel of Amen. Jesus Christ because it's the power of God unto salvation evangelist hmm. Wow <laughs> To God be the glory for the great, great things he has and is and is going to do tonight. I mean, uh, Rev has said a lot, but there is so much more. The one thing we realize is that you cannot exhaust this good news. And um, there is so much to be said. We have already, from last week, we identified, we have already identified the, who the, 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 the landowner was. Yes, that's We God. identified who the, which is, um, we know the landowner. Who is the landowner? The landowner is God. We know we had identified the, the, the vine dressers, which is the, 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 the religious sect, mm -hmm. as we would call them. You know, we know the servants were the prophets and those that came with the word. And, you know, so we, we really um, went down and identified. And one of the things I realized is that I love this landowner. He did not just put them in the land like that. But what he did, he provided everything for them. You know, he, he got the land, he dig a wine press, he did whatever they needed. He did provide it and that is what God, because remember, we own nothing. You know, there is nothing in this earth that we own. Everything belong to God. Everything. We are here just occupying, as he said, occupy till he come mm -hmm. and because he said occupy till he come he provided what we needed to occupy and as we occupy he expects something from us he didn't say he, he did he don't want all of it he just wants his portion so we have a responsibility that to give back to the lord as he gives us we have here, we see Dr. Young, I, I know that we, we, we have it last week. We went a wide way into the, the, the land owner and we discovered that the Israelites uh, were the one participating there. And um, tonight when Reverend Carlson speak about denying yourself. Uh, so Dr. Young, would you take up from here and give us some light? Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop Vincent. I'm glad to be here with uh, Reverend Nicholson and his wife and uh, Evangelist Debbie. It's always good to be here and I'm giving God thanks and glory for such a privilege. And, you know, I've listened to the, 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 the contributions thus far. And one of the things here that stood out to me in this uh, very scenario in looking at the the entire background of uh, this story. It is uh, very profound that we understand uh, the the good hands of God, and uh, mm. we understand the uh, what is called the universality of God's provision. And we can go back to a simple portion of scripture that we have down to the annals of biblical history that we have quoted in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we look here and understand that Jesus Christ is uh, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ uh, 
is the one that came and paid the price and the fact that God we understood from in the Old Testament that even in those days uh, that the prophets when they spoke and they herald uh, the goodness and the power of uh, Jehovah Yahweh that those of the time couldn't uh, fathom and understand uh, all that God was doing and then God gave them an opportunity allowed his son Jesus Christ to have a uh, come I'm, I'm always uh, delighted at the fact that salvation was wrought for our lives we were the Bible said Peter said that we were men uh, we were lost sheep have gone astray but now have we returned unto the bishop uh, of our souls and, and and therefore tonight when we look at the, this this story here and we take it one by one step by step we understand the grace of God the power of God in Bishop you have said a while ago you've quoted uh, from the Word of God uh, where the Apostle Paul himself said I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation and hence the, the reason uh, that though men would have gone astray there is a provision that has been made yes. and the fact that this provision is made they, they, they entreated the prophets of old they did listen not even in the time of Noah did they listen then and God did what he had to have done in those days and Jesus Christ now I, I want to make an appeal to those of you out in in radio land you're under the, the hearing of our voices here in this studio on this broadcast uh, that you don't know what's going to be the next hour you don't know if you're going to live to see tomorrow tomorrow does not belongs to you but because God had given Christ Jesus I want to challenge somebody out there that you understand uh, that uh, these men of the past uh, they, they ill-treated and then they even killed the hair which is Jesus Christ our Lord tonight you can have an opportunity and as a matter of fact tonight is your opportunity yes, to be able to say yes to Jesus I can tell you most profoundly and very emphatically that he is coming back again hallelujah and John's gospel chapter 14 verse 1 let us to know that he says let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe in me also in my father's house there are many mansions if they were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again that where I am there he may be also don't let up on the opportunity tonight you're hearing these men and women of God it's your opportune time it's a time that you can turn them and says look I may have been living living my life in revelry and one tongueness but I, I want to respond to all that I'm hearing coming from this panel tonight I have tried everything in my own human self it had fallen apart but I want to let you know that uh, the Bible says uh, David declare very uh, forcefully and testimonially David said in Psalm 37 and verse 25 he said I was young and now I'm old yeah. never have I seen the righteous be forsaken uh, nor his seed begging bread and that there is an appeal also in Matthew's gospel 15 uh, it says Jesus declared he gave an invitation he says come on to me uh, that are heavy laden and I will give you rest tonight can be your night that you can rest from one tongue living from a life of revelry from a life that has been uh, not only a life filled with stress but distress because when stress is not uh, uh, treated it goes into the next room known as distress I want to challenge your heart and I want to ask uh, tonight that you will hear the voices of these men and women of God and adhere because you don't hold tomorrow you don't even know hold the next hour in your hands Bishop the Lord bless God bless you you heard that and you don't forget you can call us at 347-663-8638 we're going to be here ready to pray for you ready to counsel ready to talk to you because we are here with this vision to talk to you on tonight don't Turn the dial off. Stay tuned, as uh, Sister Alexandra uh, Nicholson, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Sister Nicholson, uh, take up from here. Yes, I'm just going to um, speak on the parable 
of the uh, wicked vine dresses. Mm -hmm. uh, before Jesus uh, began to mention the the wicked vine dresses, the parable of the wicked vine dresses to the to the religious leaders. It is uh I will go back to Matthew twenty one, chapter twelve. And these are some of the things that Jesus was doing. We would say that, uh, let's look, and they said, Jesus went into the temple and cast out all th them that sold mm. and brought mm. in. That's right. Them the, I'm sorry, all them that sold and brought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and, and the seat of them that sold dove. And then again, we will say, and then Jesus said, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it the den of thieves. That's from Isaiah 56, 7. Jesus quoted that. And then going down, the lame and the blind came into the temple and Jesus healed them. So the religious leaders was watching all these things. And they came, it says in um, chapter 23 of Matthew 21, it's, I'm saying, verse 23 of Matthew 21, they came over into the temple and the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, by what authority knowest thou these things? And who gave these authority? So this is coming to where Jesus now began to tell them the parable which mentioning that the father he is that here the son of the father yeah that is um israel he so he told them a story which they are familiar with because mm -hmm. since they are historians and so well versed in the old testament jesus gave them from isaiah 50 um five i'm sorry isaiah five i believe um maybe say chapter five to seven or maybe a little bit before <coughs> or three to seven about the parable of the vineyard how the father came mm -hmm. and gave uh gave the land to the um the, the israelites he um took out the enemies he cleared them up mm -hmm. and he gave them the leaders to help the people to adhere to the word of god so that they can be a light to other nations, that when other nations see how well God is blessing Israel, they will draw other nations unto them. Mm. But as I mentioned last week, Israel went and sinned and followed what the other nation was doing. So now God put judgment on Israel. So what um, Jesus was really telling them, you know, I'm telling you this now because I am here and I am the son of the father God who you are rejecting oh, yes. Oh, yes. I am here and you're rejecting me mm. because you're so self-righteous self-righteous but not in having faith in God of his righteousness but you see yourself and not able to see God that's why mm. you're so blind mm. to see me mm -hmm. and see whoever me. do not have faith in God will be judgment will come on them because you're if you do not accept me mm. The Son of God, who is a Savior that God has sent to the world to save you. And to, because the law, as they were thinking that they were following so well, the law does not save. Yeah, the right. only thing the law does is show them that they show them sin. Them sin. Yes, yes. yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why Jesus is telling them, I am the one that come to fulfill the law. And mm -hmm. through me, you shall be saved by mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. You shall be saved, and you is not it, how well you follow the law, but you must follow the law with faith in obeying God, not showing how well you look by doing well. You you, you notice that as as you speak here, that there is a reason. There is a reason why so many. We know the Israelites were blessed. We know that they are God's people. God came for them. But if we look, the Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not. Mm -hmm. But to as many as receive him, to them give he the power to become the sons of God. My problem here is why so many people 
are rejecting God and rejecting the church in general. Evangelist, can you help mm -hmm. us here with that? Um, we have to realize something. As um, um, Sister Nicholson said, and Reva also said it, I think the, um, Dr. Young, man have an agenda. Mm -hmm. And their agenda is not God's agenda. Mm -hmm. Their agenda, as um, the sister read, look what they were doing in the temple. They were selling and they was behaving lewd in the temple. And that is not God's agenda. So what they do, they, because of that, one of the things, God would not tolerate sin. Mm -hmm. So because God would not tolerate sin and man want to sin, and man, you, we know that man has a choice. So what we do now, we choose sin. Rather than choosing God, that and that's what I'm, that's the reason why we reject. And then I was like, it's like when Israel said, "Give me Barabbas, don't away with him, give me sin." It's sin. It's what sin is. What I want. We have to realize that we are. I was reading something and it was so profound to me that we are, we are not our own. No matter who you are, you are not our own. The writer says you are bought with a price. Mm -hmm. No, we have to realize that we are what we call sharecroppers. Mm, now, when I look up what sharecroppers were, sharecroppers were families who worked in on the farm. The farm did not belong to them. They were given the farm to work and they work, they planted, they seeded, they harvest, and at the end of the harvest, they had to give the landowner his portion and they got some for themselves. So basically, that is what this scripture is telling us. We are sharecroppers and each and every one of us, no matter who you are and where you are, we have to realize that we own nothing. Mm -hmm. You see, we sometimes we tend to act like, you know, like the three-year-olds. Each toy they see is mine, <laughs> mine. My, you know, everything is mine. We have to get off the mind mindset because everything belongs to God. We are just occupying it for a season. You have a vineyard. You have a vineyard. Each and every one of us, God give us a vineyard to tend to. Your vineyard may not be my vineyard. You might be planting grapes and I might plant, be planting figs. But you have a responsibility to tend that vineyard. Because everything you need to tend that vineyard, God already gave it to you. He built the wine press. He put the tower. Everything you need. Whenever you go out there, you have to see the vineyard before you. What are you doing with the vineyard that is before you? So the parable goes on. Just like we read in, in, in the 33rd verse that when we see people looking in and thinking that what's going on now, the word of God says, as it was in the days of no. Noah, so mm. shall it be in the day of mm -hmm. the coming That's of the right. Lord. That's so right. we are seeing the same type of things happening and, and men are growing fast, Reverend Nicholson, after dishonesty. And because of dishonesty, it, 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 it hurt me when I have to stay on the radio and say that the same type of operation that are going on in the world is creeping in the churches. And this is where the pain comes for Pastor Vincent because I think that we're supposed to be a peculiar people. Amen. We're supposed to be That's a call out people. That's Right. A chosen generation. <laughs> then if we're going to maintain that, we do not look to this parable and practice what we see, but look to it and practice the good and maintain Jesus. Reverend? Bishop, with, with, with my experience uh, as a believer, what I've seen, it, it tells me that Men uh, and and I'm saying men and I don't only mean male the male I mean yeah, I know. the human race, okay. Men does not have any fear f for God. Mm -hmm. I I often say sometimes when I preach, I say some of the guys they come in the church as they left the world and they come in like they out there they was like slick willing. 
and they come into the church and operating as brother Willie, but doing the same thing they used to do on the outside. Slick butter, really, this time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, t t today I asked a lady about someone who I heard was going to be baptized. That uh, Friday evening, uh, she passed by the food pantry. She said, Pastor, I'm going to be baptized tonight. I said, Congratulations. Go brave. The Lord, your God, is with you. And wish the best. So I asked about her today. How is she doing? She said, she did not baptize. I said, why? She decided it was too many rules to follow. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Too many rules to follow. You see, mm -hmm. David said, I was born in sin and shaped in, in iniquity. iniquity. You, you, you see, some of the people they don't want to forget about yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They keep yesterday in their today's agenda. Mm -hmm. And if you want to dance and go to the nightclub, fornicate, adulterate, Jesus said, none of that mm. goes on in my kingdom. So, again, sin cannot be hidden. Your sin will find you out. Amen. Most of them, again, when they find, when 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 they when they find, when it, people find out what's going on with them and confront them, they leave the church. What do they do? No repentance. They slip into another church, and they nice for a couple of months, but back in the same mud. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. Back in the same mud. That's why, brothers and sisters, we must be careful again who we rub shoulders with in church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said to a lady again this week, I said, listen, don't look at the backsliders because who you look at, that's who you will follow. Mm -hmm. Look unto Jesus. Yes. Seek the word of God. Learn how to find some praying people. Get mm -hmm. yourself busy for the Lord. Because if you just stand back and do like you're watching a movie, you will fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And Jesus warn us, be vigilant. Yes. yes, yes. Be vigilant. That's right. That's right. Be sober-minded. Don't get drunk with the things that's happening in the world. The enemy is operating in the church. And that's not new. No. Because the, 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 the word of God tells us in the book of Job, Satan was going from the earth to the heavens. Mm. Going through and fro. Mm. So what's going on in the church today is nothing new. It might be new to, to some believers who does not know the word of God. I beg you, I beseech you. Study the word of God. If you get into a ministry, go to Bible lesson. Go to prayer night. Mm. That's where you will develop muscles. Amen. Amen. God, God bless, bless you. you. Remember, you're listening to the Hour of Prayer coming to you live from Faith Life Ministry. Faith Life Ministry is a family church located at 844 Clarkson Avenue in Brooklyn. Visit the church anytime. We'll give you some announcements at the end of the program. But remember, we love people. We love you. And we want you to see the light and follow Jesus. Dr. Young. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Bishop. It's, it's very interesting to, to listen to the, the commentary of uh, all the, these, again, men and women of God around here. And uh, the commonality here is that God is interested, as you have rightly said a while ago, Bishop, about uh, people. And I have advocated uh, for the last 35 and 36 years in lifting the name of Christ Jesus up that God started with humankind in the book of Genesis and he's going to end with humankind in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And that's why we bring this gospel and we're not ashamed to bring it to you. And we want to let you know that uh, God has got a place for you, but you've got to open up your heart 
to this good news. So you read the, the, the printed news every day and you listen to, to the electronic news, the electronic media, and there is scarcely anything that can uplift your heart and uplift your mind and, and set you a go and give you any hope. But there is hope in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that tonight, uh, that despite of what you may have heard and what you presently is going through, that God paid the price for you. He's interested in you. You may say, Dr. Young, uh, uh, the things that I may have done and how life has been for me, and probably you've said I've hit rock bottom and there is nowhere out. I want to tell you with God, all things are possible. According to Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, for nothing shall be impossible possible with God. Mm, yeah. This man Christ Jesus came and he died. He laid on his life for his friend. And even when we were not lovable or deserving of the love of God, John's gospel in the first uh, first John 4, he says, Behold what manner of love oh. the Father had mm -hmm. bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And that Christ died for us. Come on now. I yeah. want you to know that tonight you're out there you're struggling in sin you have reached your dead and hit rock bottom everything seems to be in a quandary and you don't know where next or whom next to look to I want to tell you and invite you you can look to Jesus uh, as the word of God have said in the book of Hebrews looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith he never fails that that's what one songwriter ever declared uh, in his hymnology. He never fails me yet. He never failed me. My Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Uh, and here I herald the word of God to you who have had the experience uh, of giving my life over to the Lord. He has never failed. Yes, stuff do come by in our lives. Uh, things do happen, uh, but Christ, uh, the solid rock we stand uh, on Christ, we can never find ourselves sink deep in sand. He's got the ability to uphold you with his right strong arms. David recognized uh, the importance of looking uh, to God and I want you tonight know that Jesus Christ uh, he came, he died, he paid for your sin, for my sin, our sins. Uh, he died that we might live and we read of all these religious persons here tonight uh, all the Sadducees and the Pharisees uh, and you can go on to call but I want to say this to you with all due respect for those of you who are listening in Radio Land it's not about religion but more so I want to respectfully uh, say to you and bring across to you it is about a relationship with the man Christ Jesus uh, yes. if you can only open up your heart and say God I've gone so far but I've heard the word tonight uh, that you have given the invitation even in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 he says um, uh, he's given us an invitation that we can come to him in such a manner he said let us therefore come boldly before his throne of grace uh, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. This time the world needs this Savior and he's coming back again. John's Gospel chapter 14 verse 1 could and could never ever be erroneous. John says that Christ declared that very emphatically. He said let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Come on. Whatever you go to tonight he is here. We're here to pray you true. And I want to challenge your heart Heart, that this is your moment to don't give up because God uh, is not about giving up a new bishop. What kind of relationship are you having with God tonight? You might be having a rough relationship with your family, 
families are broken up, lifestyle gone down the gutter. But what type of relationship are you having with God tonight that you can turn around and say, I want to know him like Paul said in the power of his resurrection. You and you and you can turn to him tonight because listen, the word of God is powerful. The word of God is real. We don't want to see you go to hell. Somebody come by and tell you there is no hell. But listen, man, there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. So stay tuned and let God bless you as you listen to these men and women of God as they share the word of God with you and tonight. Sister Nicole. Yes, mm. I going back to your question about why so many sin going on into the church. And I do believe that uh, many people do not surrender, mm -hmm. submit mm -hmm. themselves to God. They, as a, uh, Apostle Paul said, that we must die daily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, our yes, yes. to do the stop kill like says, our flesh. That means our worldly thoughts, our worldly thinking. Mm -hmm. We must kill that and put on the. The spirit, mm -hmm. let the spirit of God operate in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the flesh, because inside the flesh, you're going to have all type of mm -hmm. idolatry, fornication, mm -hmm. idolatry, mm -hmm. thief, you know, stealing, all kind of fleshly behavior that the world goes by. But the spirit of God put us into subjection that we can follow, hear, and learn, and desire to have the will of God. Mm -hmm. So many people are living fleshly, so they do not desire too much the, the things of God. But those who you see are living, maybe the few, that are living the life and spiritually, and we don't know their heart because we cannot judge them, but they try and daily to say, Lord, I open myself to you. Today I am under your will. I am made for your purpose. Whatever your purpose for me today, I will. Like you said, I came to follow the will of my father. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, we have to follow right. the will of God that's and say right. to him, I surrender myself to you. I am under your control. Whatever purpose you have for me today, Lord, just lead me because it's for your glory. Not my, not for me, but for you. And I think if we learn to submit ourselves to God, repent of our ways. Notice that even if we're Christians and we have sinned against God, and we are living a sinful life, although we are Christians, we got to come to recognition that this is not right. This is not right for the people outside that's looking into the you mm -hmm. who's seen the way you're living. And it's like you're disgracing the cross. Oh. You oh, understand? Yes. Because come you said that you're a new creation. Yes, yes, come on. It, yes. Through, in Christ Jesus. And then why are you looking, lo acting the same way? Mm. You know, as, and then again, some of, many of them are in the church for over 20 years and reading and, and praying, but they're not subjecting to the Holy Spirit yes. to lead them, to control them, mm. to guide them, and to operate in the will of God because that is the power of the Holy Spirit to do is to help us to live yes, that Christian walk. Right. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live the Christian walk. So we say, I think many of people are quenching. They're, they're stifling the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit cannot operate fully in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if anyone wants to get, you know, uh, operate as a Christian, you know, say, Holy Spirit, I surrender. I yes. surrender. Take control. Submission. Yes. yes, and let you come and take control. Mm -hmm. And I, Lord, I repent. I sin against you, and I repent. And I want to live the life that you want me to live. And I believe, as the the Bible did say, God mm -hmm. is faithful and just yes. to, forgive to forgive us of our unrighteousness. Oh, yes. So you know. We know that the, the world, you know, we're living in the world and the world is tempt a lot of temptation. But greater is he that is in us oh, yes. oh, than yes. he that is in the world. Right. So let's That's know right. the power that we have in us because we can overcome the world through the power that we have after we receive salvation from through Jesus Christ, faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I believe with that note. Sister Nicholson, I think there are a lot of people on the outside that is touched 
and mm. this is the hour of prayer. We're going to ask Dr. Young to just pray because there might be somebody mm. right now, we don't want to pass them by. There might be somebody who hear this and said, oh, this word touched me, mm. and I want to make a choice. If you're out there and you're listening to us, please call us. We're going to pray right now. Dr. Young is going to take you and you and you to the throne of God as we look to the Lord. Dr. Young. Hallelujah. Thank you very Hallelujah. much, Bishop. Tonight we want to give you an opportunity. you listening to us there in Radio Land, and uh, I, I want to challenge you. It's an open invitation. Uh, I'm not so much concerned about your religious background or your practices of religiosity. What I'm concerned about is about you as an individual. Yes, yes. God is interested in you as an individual. And we want to open up these lines and give you an opportunity to call. We want to be praying with you. Regardless of the circumstances, You again, you may have said, I've gone too far, I've did some things that are so horrendous and God could never forgive me. I'm telling you something, the blood of Jesus Christ yes. is able to cleanse you and to wash Hallelujah. you. Yes. Hallelujah. I want you just to open up and say, Jesus, I'm yes. come tonight. Yes. I'm prepared my heart yes. to, to give you an opportunity to, to, to turn around my life. So we're opening up these lines tonight, and I want you to feel free to call us here. We're ready to pray for you. We want to lift you up. We got to pray regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the situations, regardless of the crisis and the crucibles that you're facing at this time. God is ready to hear your cry and we're here to pray with you. Feel free at this moment uh, to call us here in the studio and we're going to be agreeing together with you, Reverend Nicholson and his wife, Sister Nicholson. We've got Evangelist uh, Debbie here and our bishop here, uh, Bishop Vincent, and we want to challenge, we're challenging you. We're giving you an opportunity to come and to say, yes, I'm ready to pray for you. We are going to be agreeing tonight here on this broadcast. So we open up the lines, call us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bishop, you can give the number quickly. The, so number, that, the number you should call us is 347-663-8638. That number again, 347-663-8638. After the prayer, please call us. Praise God. Father, we want to thank you tonight and we exalt your name for your name is above every other name. And Lord, as we look to you, we ask the uh, Holy Spirit, you will undertake every iota. Mm. We come against the wiles of the enemy, his cunning craftiness and his uh, devices. We look to you, Father God, understanding uh, that there is none like unto thee, O Lord God, among the gods. You are our God and our Father, the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I bring every family here tonight. Mm. I bring every circumstance and every scenario before you. We curse the works of the enemy. We destroy the yokes and undo the heavy burdens. We set at liberty the captive free tonight. That God, that their eyes will be wide washed with ourselves, where the enemy have blinded their minds, loose them in the name of Jesus, mm. let mm. the power of the Holy Spirit yes, go into homes, minister to those that may be in their motor vehicles yes. right now, Holy Ghost, we ask that there will be a, an arrestment yes, of your divine Jesus. presence, mm. Lord, yeah. their minds will be transformed, their mm. spirits will be regenerated, their hearts will be changed and be conformed tonight, and in the name of Jesus, let every yoke again be broken, every stronghold, let them be set at liberty. Let them walk free in the name of mm. Jesus. The bondages of the enemy be destroyed. Yes, and Father, we declare new life in Christ Jesus yes, in their lives. Uh, and that every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, according to Philippians 4 and 19, uh, be met in the lives of the heroes. The need for salvation. Uh, the need for divine healing. The need for recognizing and understanding uh, that you are a God that sits 
high and look low. God. And that your very character is that of holiness and righteousness. Yes. And you have called us to a life mm. of Peace. Yes. You're out there tonight and you've been experiencing uh, troublous and tumultuous uh, circumstances in your life. Uh, I want to let you to know that Romans chapter 5 and verse 1 declares uh, that therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God. Yes. You can walk in wholesomeness of divine peace. Uh, yes. The peace of God which passeth all understanding that keeps our hearts and mind to Jesus Christ our Lord. Father we thank you now. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus mighty matchless name. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you realize how good this prayer has been to you please take up your phone and call us. 347 Six six three eight six three eight. Don't forget that you're listening to the hour of prayer coming to you live from Faith Life Ministry. Amen. Faith Life Ministry is located at eight forty four Claxon Avenue in Brooklyn. You can't miss it. That's between East Fifty First and Utica. Uh, Evangelist, I I I were looking at this verse, um, and this is. The, the verse here as we were speaking just a while ago um, the 30 um, 35th verse it says but when the tenants took his servant and beat one and kill another and stole the, and stole the hide now we, we, we notice here this is coming from the amplified mm -hmm. and we notice the, 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 the things that they did are the things that they got involved with. It, it, it is similar creeping in to our churches today. The, 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 the principle and the attitude is, is similar creeping in into the churches. I've watched television and, and, and I remember um, Sister Nicholson was saying something just now when I, I watched television and I saw they say come as you are mm -hmm. and it, it, it seems as though there were people full of wine mm -hmm. and, and they just went and they began to praise and they began to sing and we notice that I don't sometimes my vision here is to, 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 to reach the ungodly man, to reach the unsaved man. But when I realize what is hindering the unsaved man to come, it bothers me. It, it, it bothers me because I realize that a lot of us in the church, in the temple, are blocking. The they, they, we are hindering them because the ungodly man read us better than they read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Evangelist? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, Bishop, so right that um, you said that. But you know what? In spite of what? The Bible said, thou art inexcusable. Mm -hmm. So, that's the reason why the, 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 the Bible says, looking unto Jesus. The author. Mm -hmm. The author and the finisher. You see, sometimes our focus is wrong you know we said sometime back in 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 bible class is that we come into church and we see stuff is going on and we join the stuff that is going on monkey see monkey do but the thing is there comes a time you could do that for a time but there comes a time and we have to be the berean christians here we got to search the scripture to see if the things that we're doing if it is so mm -hmm. we cannot just you know monkey see monkey do we cannot continue in that you understand with what shall we say to these things shall we continue in sin you know if you search the script or whatever you need the vine dresser has uh, the 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 land owner has already provided it amen you amen. have to take what he give you and work it is not what you see one of the things the 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 the, the pharisees didn't do they brought in their own thing as um sister nicholson read they brought in doves they the the the, the, the land owner did not give them that to do you understand he gave them the right seeds he gave them the water he gave them the tower and everything so is you to to use what god lend you 
as we said before nothing belongs to you and what whenever you bring in you know you bring in stuff that's your stuff god does not have no dealing with your stuff god give you what he wants you to work with and you have the responsibility to work with what god give you sometimes we have to shift our focus from man and sh look into the the Cre the creator and not the creature even though it does not matter what state you're in doesn't matter your condition you have listen out there in radio land you messengers are coming to you it's not all the messengers that is doing the wrong thing yes some is doing but you know what you need to seek god for your guidance oh yes, oh, yes. you understand you know pleasing pleasing god and not man seek god because at the end of the day you know you cannot go to god and say this is what reverend nicholson was doing you understand and the devil caused me to do it you understand because god has already given you the choice he said choose the, this day who you will serve and if god be god that's what he wants you to do and he he did not he said i will not have you ignorant he gave us the the blueprint how to do it so the mere fact you see others are doing other things you understand you don't have to go with the multitude yes, that's right. you understand we does not if you're out there in radio land and you're listening you don't have to go to the multitude pick up the scripture and read it and when you read it and you, you may not understand it all pray and ask god to give you the revelation of his word you can't do it without looking at what others are doing do what jesus do the word it you understand mary said whatsoever he tell you to do mm -hmm. that you must do so the word is right so you know we you still does not have an excuse to say that oh the um the pastor caused me to fall or the 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 the, the, the brother or the bench or or, or, or or the mic you understand you have a responsibility to seek the word of god and follow the scripture as god intended it to you heard this so pay attention the line is open call us for prayer call us to make a change in your life and for you help is on its way rev nicholson praise god to to continue with the 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 question why people are falling out and they're not in the churches of today one of the things that affecting believers is lack of faith too lack of faith mm. here in hebrews 10 uh, verse 3 said through faith mm -hmm. we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god amen the world was the the world is not uh, talking about whether you you are in sin or not the the, the world means here creation 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 those who follow jesus those who follow the word those who allow the the word to enter their heart those who allow faith to be built up in the believer the word of god framed them like like Take a look at uh, let's take a look at a picture frame. There is four sides, four four things that call, that makes the frame. What that frame, what happens to that frame on the inside? Whatever inside it causes a protection against the outside. So the word of God helps the believer, builds faith in the believer. Mm. and it protects the believer from the wiles of the enemy mm. so the, the bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please god mm -hmm. so people go to church today and if or when you invite someone to church first thing they want to know what, what time the service will end mm, my god my god that's a fact that's a fact what time the service will end <laughs> When you ask them, when you invite them, when I used to invite friends to go to party, <laughs> if the party over six o'clock in the morning, you go, hey, do you know any place else to go and party? That's right. That's right. They still want to party, but to go to church yeah. for two hours, two and a half hours, oh, the service is too long. Yeah. 
But uh, I don't want to get into religion here tonight. But some churches, one hour. And they flock there for that one hour to go back and do sin. When they go in empty and they leave empty. Mm -hmm. They don't want no Bible lesson. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go to pray. Because that's too long. No, this one pray too long. And this one teach for too long. Brothers and sisters, if you want Jesus, you have to make sacrifices. Yes. Amen. When I became a believer, I started going to church in the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Every time the door opened, I was there. Amen. Hallelujah. And I asked God in my prayers, Father God, give me a burning desire to seek after you and your righteousness, O God. Mm -hmm. Some people think churches is too big. Brothers and sisters, regardless to the big the size of the church, it is the spirit of God and the word of God that will mm -hmm. guide you. Yes, Amen. That's, Amen. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And God always have a ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. With me, I started going to church and one night a guy called me and he said, my brother, hi, my name is Vance. He said, I, I've noticed that you've been coming to church on a Sunday and on a Tuesday night, in prayer night. You've been coming every, every Tuesday night. I want to invite you to the upper room. Mm. The, and I asked him, because I was pretty new on it, on this thing, you know. I asked him, what's the upper room, brother? What goes on there? He said, prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayers. So I went there. Bishop, I went there 8 o'clock at night in the evening. And we finished at 6 o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. It took away my sin time. Yes. <laughs> it took away my sin time. Because... My sin, most of the times I used to go out, was within that those hours, on a on a on a Saturday night, on a Friday night, going out and party, going out and have fun. It took away my sin time, and what it caused me to do, pray for others, because when you become a believer, it's no longer me, myself, and I. I went there and I start I started. Praying and going to church regularly and learn to intercede for others. Pray for the needs of others. Because again, Christianity is not just me. Jesus it's and I. It's not me. It is not about me. Amen. Somebody said you. in the panel address now that the a big thing about it is that what type of relationship we have with God Amen. and we discover that if you're on the outside and you don't have a relationship with God it's not too late for you to get a relationship with God listen you will never regret getting a relationship with God what are you doing what are you saying right now you can just turn remember the Bible say if any man be in Christ he's a new creature right. all things are passed away and behold and all, all become new are. so having that new relationship with God will put you in a different position in your life that you're living right now your family will be blessed your 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 your, your work partners will be blessed your business will be blessed your home will be blessed because you are looking unto Jesus so stay tuned and remember you'll be a, you're listening to the hour of prayer coming to you live from Faith Life Ministry Faith Life Ministry is a family church located at 844 Claxton Avenue in Brooklyn that's between East 51st and Utica we got services that we're going to tell you about and we want you to come out and let the Lord have its way in your life because remember it's not by might it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, spirit. said the Lord. Sister Nicole, you have anything to share? Yeah. <coughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> I just said, everybody, what everyone shared was wonderful. And just to say, it's just abide. Abide in the Lord. Abiding in the Lord is praying, reading the word of God, 
sing and just have faith in him, faith in the word of God. Spend time praying to him, rejoicing in him, and just let hear the word of God speak to you. Submit to the word of God so that God can abide, you know, you abide in him, he abide in you. And it will become a life that is, you'll find it a peaceful life. Even although troubles may be around you, and people may trying to harm you, hurt you, trying to persecute you, but your confidence that is in God, you don't really worry what men can do to you. But you just know that you're secure in God. So I would tell and you know everyone out there, just get closer to God. Stay with Him, no matter what. He's with you, and the peace of God will surpass all human understanding. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, yes. And when <laughs> when God gets in you, there is a difference. Amen. There, there is a, it. It takes a toll and a difference in the life of men and women when God gets in. I don't care what people say. I don't care what the world have to tell you, what your unsaved friends, what your family have to tell you. When you accept Christ, there have to be a oh change. Yes. Oh there yes. have to be a change. And for you to, to see the change, you must accept the Christ. Not just going to church. Not just thinking about church, but giving your life over to Him and asking him to come into your heart and change your life. Evangelist? Mm -hmm. Bishop, um, when you speak like that, um, one of the things that come to mind, we have to let our listeners know, in order to achieve Christ, you must be born again. Yeah. May I say one thing? And I will say one thing about a little story about myself. About a few weeks ago, I, I was angry with a certain person. And then I... I re I called up and explained my anger, but then you know, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you know, no, call back that person and apologize, mm. because mm. you Jesus. are in Christ. Yes. And what message mm. Mm. are you showing that individual? And then you tell that individual or even ask that if individual to forgive you and you forgive them mm -hmm. and no matter what I still love you mm. and nothing you can do can stop me from loving you that's right. and uh, that's what I wanted to say that sometimes we do we're not perfect we're not angelic you know that we always uh, acting mm -hmm. out of hand but what we can do is when the Holy Spirit you're in Christ and the Holy Spirit speaks to you you go back because mm. you've right. got to really show the light of what God, Christ is in you because sometimes some people say what kind of person is that what kind of Christian so you got to go back and you know say oh no I it's not for myself but it's the Christ that's in me yes. I have must to show seen, it must be seen and then you got to you know let that person say you know you know make peace because the Bible says pursue peace yes. Mm -hmm. yes. and we have to make that not open that people make peace with us we have to make peace with others because the spirit in us is of peace mm -hmm. Amen. oh this is this is so such so, so good and so profound and in order for you to you you know to do that as um sister nicholson said you must be subject is that is like she rightfully said it's not that you would make errors god knew you was going to make some errors along the way but he called you nonetheless Mm -hmm. So what you do you do when you make them the errors? You go and make it right. There is still a fountain flowing with blood. Mm. There is still drawn from Emmanuel vein. And sinners plunge, you lose all that guilty stain. So it's not that you wouldn't some stain wouldn't fall on your white garment sometimes, but there is a fountain. You now have to go back. What she one of the things she said that was so right. She, in her spirit, and it takes the spirit of God to do that because flesh will tell you to uh, get angry some more, rail some more, get bitter, point finger, do all of them stuff the works of the flesh but here the spirit and you were subject to the spirit that you went and do it right and i tell you this when you when you're obedient to the spirit and you do as the spirit lead you there is such a release you know there is such a peace that come upon you there is such a release and that is what others are look at now by you doing that that message you said not but not what you said but because of what you did that message could win a soul and that is and what that was intention was 
That's mm -hmm. what is so import important you know, because of the fact what you just did, you just dress your vineyard. Because mm -hmm. each and every one of us have a vineyard to dress. Mm -hmm. But we, we find it so difficult that we discover people in the church don't like to repent. People, we, we get in problem with the word repentance. We get in problem with the word uh, going to somebody and say, I'm sorry. We, we have so much problem with that. But there is a word for that. The Bible said, except you repent. You shall. You all shall. It's not your might. It's not a maybe. But you shall. So, no matter whether you're in, out, or across, before or behind the church, it does not matter. I accept you repent. Hell awaits your mm. arrival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bev, Nicole, um, Dr. Young. <laughs> 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 oh yes, oh yes, we're getting there. <laughs> you know, I, I, um, oh, Sister Nicholson said something a while ago uh, in mm. her sharing that uh, I love it dearly because uh, I, that's the realm that I'm walking all the time and I give God thanks to you. That's why I'm, I'm still here and I always make my boast in the Lord because mm. of walking and she spoke about we've got to have faith in God and yeah. some folk don't understand what it is to have faith in God and I recall uh, Matthew's Gospel chapter 11 in the very 22nd verse and Jesus made a very profound statement and he yeah, says have faith in God on. which is to say have the God kind of faith and then in the 23rd verse he went on to say that whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe the things which he say it shall come to pass thou shall have them and, uh, and and faith is not just a definition where we can define it as in Hebrews chapter 11 from verse uh, 1 where it talks about now faith is but faith is uh, twofold as well it has uh, a subject and an and an object. So faith is both subjective and it is objective. The object uh, is God our Father. So when we say have faith, we sing have faith in God. So when we say have faith, we sing you can open up your life. And I heard Bishop uh, made mention to the scripture a while ago, uh, according to Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, where it says, uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. It is faith in Jesus Christ. Again, God is the object that we have faith in. And we are the subject in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 talks about it. It talks, it, it says that by grace are ye saved through faith. It is the gift of God and not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. So tonight, uh, God has already done the work. The gift has already been placed before you. It is your portion and your time, and it is your decision to accept this free gift. And just before I turn over to Bishop, I, I went back to the, the, the 42nd verse uh, as we read here in uh, the same Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. And it spoke about, uh, it talked about uh, the uh, Jesus said, Know ye not that the stone which the builder have rejected becomes the chief cornerstone? And when I looked at Isaiah chapter 53, one of the things that they said about uh, this our mass, this same Jesus, as the book of Acts said, it says in the third verse of um, Isaiah chapter 53, it says, He is despised, and this is mm. talking about Jesus, and rejected, mm -hmm. a man rejected Sorry. of men, a man of sorrows, mm -hmm. and acquainted with grief. Mm -hmm. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. The thing is, that's what's going to go on. We're going to be rejected, but I always say to people, do not do like Potiphar's wife when she was rejected. This young man, she made a sexual advancement toward him in Genesis chapter 39, and 
people deal with rejection differently. As a matter of fact, her rejection by Joseph, this young, wonderful, tall, stately young man at the age of 20, she couldn't take his uh, rejection of her. And you know what she did? She lied on him. She caused him two years of innocency, of imprisonment. And we got to be very careful. But when you're rejected, I want you to let you know something, that Jesus Christ, God mm. is about mm. to do something for your life. Mm. You need not give up, but God is on your side. Mm. People may reject you. They despise you. Grief come to your life of no making of years. Don't be the fabricator of your difficulties uh, mm. and your own problems. Uh, but when they come, God is able to do exceeding. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. All that we ask or we think according to the power that worketh within us. Faith in God. We sang in old times, Bishop. Faith in God can move a mighty mountain. Faith in God can calm the troubled sea. Faith in God can bring the desert like a fountain. Faith in God will give the victory. Hallelujah. Bishop. And when you got that faith in God some people put faith in religion yes they mm. put faith in a man they mm. put faith in the bosses they put faith they serve different gods amen but you got to have faith in God and when that faith began to function your problems your burdens your heartaches and everything if your demon possess faith can get it out because you're going to believe in God if you if you are running down and your jobs you're getting problem amen in the medical field so many people are having problems but listen God can change your life around oh yes just exercise oh, yes. faith faith in God can move a mighty mountain you can get help all you have to do is to call the line right now it's open 347-663-8638 just relax we played this song already but just to get your mindset just listen to what this song is saying right now Sometimes I feel I am slipping Sometimes I feel I'm drifting away Sometimes I feel so down and out This is my song I'm pleading to you
stray. You heard this song say, Lord, help me not to stray. Are you straying away tonight and mm. feel that you have gone too far to even turn back? You haven't gone too far. Mm. You can still come to Jesus. As we said, you must know him as your personal Savior. Lord, help me. Are you going to talk to God tonight and ask him to help you? Are you going to talk to God? This song was done by one of Faith Life members, and we thank God for that. We thank God for her as she sang meaningfully. Lord, if, if I'm falling, don't let me down. Pick me up. You mm -hmm. can ask God to pick you up tonight. You can ask God to take hold of your life. And that I know God will do it for you. Stay tuned. There are a lot more coming. Reverend Nicholson. Praise God. Praise God. Have faith in God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's the only thing will stand for the believer. Yes. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. I thank God for all that, you know, that was said tonight. Mm -hmm. And like Evangelist Debbie said, it's so much, so much you cannot, you know, because every time you look at the verse, the Holy Spirit reveals something yes. more. Yes more yes. for you yeah I'm, I'm looking at the f 42nd verse and and it said Jesus said unto them did you never read in the scripture the stone mm -hmm. which the builders rejected the same is become to become the head of the corner this is the Lord's doing mm -hmm. this is the Lord's doing uh, hallelujah this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes the stone the builder rejects you know, I used to do mason work years ago. And when you're building a house and you set the foundation and you put up the cornerstone, well, we as masons used to put the corner brick. When you put the corner brick and you square it and you level it and you plumb it, All right. mm. <laughs> and you run your line from one to the other. Brother, there is no failure in that. That's mm. right. Mm. When you look at, you stand from a distance and you look at the wall, it is straight, straight, straight. So I say to anyone out there tonight who listening, when you put Jesus in your life, there is no failure in Jesus. Come on now. Mm. And I guarantee you, you have nothing to lose but everything to gain. Amen. Just accept him as your personal savior. Mm -hmm. Now, your friends may not like you. But because, let me tell you something. There is a, a old joke I heard years ago and still it's been used that any time a, a, a crab decides to step out of the barrel, the others pull him in. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Hallelujah. And people will tell you who you used to be. And look at you now. You're playing this and you're playing that. Mm -hmm. Just remember, brothers and sisters, the Bible said there is no condemnation yes. Yes. to those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Who walk? Ah, Hallelujah! Come on, no, come on, no. Yes, my yes. brothers and my sisters, mm -hmm. when you in Christ, they will criticize you. Mm -hmm. I had an experience with a good friend of mine. He is a man. When he offered me a drink, come, let's go to the pool room. I said, man, I give up that man. I give it up. What you playing, man? 
Huh? What happened? Would you believe three years later he found Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. And I invited him to a, 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 a service one night. And he was on fire for the Lord. Jesus. And mm. you know, this guy, he used to drink so much. He had swollen knees. His feet were swollen. He couldn't even walk. He was he was on social sec social security. Mm. After he accepted Jesus, Jesus did a thing in him. Mm. And one of his testimony was, he said, "Listen, I am working in a nursing home now. The dining room is I is my area to to sweep and mop every day." He said they call the dining room. The football field. Mm, Jesus. He said, and Francis, if you see me in the morning, how I'm walking and moving, look at me now. Jesus has given me a new body. Yes, mm. new lease on life. Mm. Jesus right. has given me a new mind. Mm. Yes. Mm. Brothers and sisters, whatever situation that you might be in, Jesus is still in the healing business. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Whatever was taken away from you, Jesus is still in the restoration business. Amen. Just mm -hmm. come to accept him today yes. as your personal savior. Yes. Amen. Thank you. We are uh, getting down under time and we have some announcement to make and we want you to remember this, that you can be changed. Amen. You mm -hmm. can be changed. Change can come. All you have to do is to turn to Jesus. He is a life changer. And he can change your life. He can set you free. And the Bible says, Whom the Son of Man set free is free, free indeed. indeed. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go back into the world and dip yourself in the things of the world. You can stand firm. Walk through the world. And still not be of the world. With this in mind, we're going to make some announcement to you at, for this time because we want you to know what's happening and where you can go and what you can do. So we're going to ask Reverend Nicholson to take a few minutes here and uh, share with you some of what's going on in the Kanasi area. Rev? Welcome again, uh, listeners. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. Well, at the Christian Church of Kanasi and the Lighthouse of Hope, we do prayers, we pray for people, we lead people to Christ in the Lighthouse of Hope, and we serve food every Saturday morning from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Come out and get your bags full. I say, come out and get your bags full. And if you want prayers, we do prayers right on the line there. Whosoever want prayers, we have a minister. The minister comes out and sometimes my wife is on the line to taking your prayer request and praying for you right on the line. We not only take care of the physical, we take care of the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And we lead people to Christ. Those who want Jesus in their life, we lead them in their lives. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we we collecting clothes for Haiti. Any, any, any one of you have clothes, and I am saying clean clothes. <laughs> we don't want no raggedy, dirty clothes. That's right. Amen. That's right. Things you would not wear for yourself, don't bring it to us, because we we don't want to be handling dirty clothes. If you have some clean clothes that's wearable, bring it to us. And if you want to make any donation, you can you can call or come to us. We'll be glad to see you and, and talk to you and let you know for you to see the work that we're doing in the Kanasi area. But God bless you. Amen. We, we give God the praise for Reverend Nicholson and his wife and we want you to know that what they're doing, you can participate. You can, you can get up and get and you can be a blessing. Some people has more than enough and they can bless people. So we want to ask Reverend Nicholson for the last time to give you a telephone number where you can contact him with whatever donation or whatever you have. Amen. It's a good in helping. So you give us the Again, telephone number. We're located at 602 East 
89th Street in Canarsie, right at the corner of Farragut Road. And the telephone number is 929-307-7991. God bless, God bless you. I hope you pay attention to that. For coming up to Faith Life Ministry, we we have been working and going and going. And tomorrow night, we're going to be at the church. And we have uh, uh, Dr. Young. Dr. Young going to be ministering on tomorrow night. I know him to be a man of God. So I, I am glad that he's in this in the studio right now. And he might tell you what is expected of the service on tomorrow night, Dr. Young. Praise the Lord. Thank you again, Bishop. Tomorrow night, I want to invite you to come to Faith Life Ministries. Uh, it's going to be a tremendous time. We're looking toward the Lord. Tomorrow night is one night of prophetic word, explosion, healing, and deliverance service. Bring somebody. Bring the deaf. Bring the dumb. Bring the lame. Bring the blind. You dare to trust God. So tomorrow night, I want you to bring somebody. Don't come by yourself. If you know that it's good for you, it's got to good for somebody else. In Jesus Christ, we know He's our all sufficiency. Tomorrow night, join us at Faith Life. As you've heard Bishop said, that you can come by. You're always welcome. And tomorrow night, we're going to have a tremendous time in the presence of the Lord. Bring a friend and come. Again, I'm Dr. P.B. Young and I'm glad to be with Bishop in this wonderful panel of men and women of God tonight. And I look forward to continuing to being with you. The Lord bless you. Bishop. Other than to that, we have every Friday, every Friday night at 7.30 we have a deliverance service and on Saturday morning, this coming Saturday morning we have a guest from Nigeria. We have a guest from Nigeria there in the island looking about the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship and they're going to be one minister from Nigeria, one from Pennsylvania. They're going to be with us on Saturday morning in our 6 o'clock prayer meeting and you can come out. We pray for the nation. We pray for you. Whatever problem you have, you can come and share it with us and we take time to bring it to the Lord and pray. So you mm -hmm. can come out this Saturday morning at 6 and every Saturday at 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. We go down in prayer. And then on Sunday is our Sunday school start at 11, 11 a.m. And there is a class for everyone. No one is excluded. There is a class for everyone. Come out to our Sunday school and then we go into a divine worship at 12. And I tell you, they're going to be a good word in the house. So we want you to be our guest. Please come out and let the Lord have its way in your life as you pay attention. Right now, we want to pray again. We want to pray. We feel that if you yes. want to accept yes. the Lord as your personal Savior, if you want to be born again, you want to be new, and you have this opportunity, uh, you, you can do it right now just by just repeating this prayer with us as we pray the sinner's prayer. You can join us in as we say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in your blood and cleanse me. Lord, I thank you for accepting me. I thank you for washing me in your blood. I will serve you. I will worship you in Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Reverend Amen. Nicholson going to pray a prayer that will touch your heart. So please open up your heart while he pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for bringing us in this place, Father. Oh, yes. And do the work, oh God, that you have set forth for us to do. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you strengthen the bishop, oh God, the minister, the doctor, the evangelist, my wife, myself, oh God. <coughs> Help us, Father. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Yeah. 
Yes. Father, fresh, send fresh wind and fresh fire to us, yes, O oh God. Yes. Father, help us, O oh God, that we will remember the cross and who went to the cross for us. It was you, Jesus. Yes. Lord, I pray a special prayer for those who are listening to us even now, O oh God. Father, I pray that you touch them, dear God. Those who have doubt, those who have fear, O oh God, take it away, Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that those who heard the sinner's prayer tonight, dear God, they will, will accept you as their personal Savior, Father God. Father, let them not go to bed the same way they went last night, O oh God. But let them wake up a new person this morning, in the morning, yes, Father yes, God. Lord. Because they have heard your word, O oh God. And you said in your word, come, come. Mm -hmm. You say, Father, when wh whosoever call on you, O oh God, mm -hmm. you will answer. Yes. I pray, O oh God, that they call on you tonight, dear Lord Jesus. Come. I pray, Father God, that you send, send an angel, O oh God. Yes. To minister to them, Father, the and Jesus. take away the doubts and the fear, O oh yes, God, right. and neutralize them, O oh God, In for your kingdom. Father, bless them, O oh God, so that they can be a blessing to the family, O oh Father. And Lord, as we are about to, to close this meeting tonight, oh, dear Jesus. God, Jesus, Father God, we pray, O oh God, that you continue, O oh Father, that the work that you started, O oh God, and send send listeners father send listeners with an obedient heart so increase will come to your kingdom i pray in the name of jesus amen, amen. amen. god amen. bless you we're so glad that you listened to us the panel will now take a minute and say give you the great last word i just want to mention to those people out there who are looking for love peace and joy in their lives but have not accepted Jesus Christ in their heart the Bible says seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so seek God first and God will truly and faithfully give you what you desire what's in his will for you praise God I want to leave you with those words have faith in God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace of the Jesus is the precious rock. God has given us a chief cornerstone and when you come to this rock, today is the day. Don't forsake the rock. The rock would be to you a covering or it could be a stumbling. The choice is yours. God bless you. This is Evangelist Debbie Russell. Night. Praise the Lord. And again, I'm Dr. P.B. Young. I'm glad to be with you tonight. And I've endorsed what Reverend Nicholson have said tonight. And he made a plea. He said, come. And that's a fact. One of the things that I've observed in the Bible is that God has been the one who has always extended the invitation to mankind. And as he had said tonight, come. And the scripture says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Your life can find a rest as of tonight. And mm. come tomorrow night as well and hear the word of God. God mm. richly bless you. Till we meet again. Let me pass yeah. you on to Bishop now. Bishop. We want to compliment and we want to send greetings out to those of you that are listening. Canada, Grenada, Trinidad. In Trinidad, we thank God. Uh, Apostle Smith is on his way, almost on his way back home. We salute him tonight. We salute uh, Reverend Magdalene Kisun in the um, church there. And we thank God for her. We thank God for uh, Reverend Gilbert in the Arima area. We thank God and we send greetings out to all of these folks who are listening to Faith Life Ministry. Remember this, we love people 
and our concern is that you serve the Lord and live for him. Amen. We greet you and we God bless you on tonight. Stay up well, stay true. Let the Lord have his way as you continue to worship him. Amen. This is Bishop Vincent saying, I love you and there is nothing you can do about That's it. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless Good the night. Lord. Amen.